Hello, everyone. Welcome to iDaily360, an inside look at our culture. We are so glad that you are taking time out of your afternoon to be here with us today. Um, to introduce myself, I am Carrie Haugen. I am our campus recruiting manager. I am located out of our Fargo, North Dakota office and have been with iDaily for just about six years. We have an awesome webinar planned for you today with lots of stories to be shared. Um, I want to cover a few housekeeping items before we get started. Um, as Amy mentioned, please utilize that Q&A. The second half of our webinar will be a panel, so we will be utilizing the questions that you submit to make sure um, that our panelists get you the information that you're looking for. Secondly, as I'm sure many of you saw through the registration, we have awesome prizes that we are going to be giving away today. Um, there'll be various points throughout the webinar where I will be doing a drawing for those prizes. Um, to win the prizes, you do have to be on the webinar for the entire time. So when I call your name, we will be um, marking that down. One of the members of my team will be following up with you to get your information, um, but we will be checking to make sure that you stayed on the webinar. Um, and then at the very end of the webinar is our, our big giveaway. And so again, needing to stay on the webinar for the whole time in order to win those prizes. Um, with that being said, an agenda for today, uh, we're going to have a quick welcome from our awesome CEO, then we're going to go over just culture and benefits, give you a great picture of who I Bailey is, and then we'll wrap up today with that career exploration panel. So with that being said, I would like to inter introduce our CEO, Jeremy Houck, and turn it over to him. Thanks, Carrie. Welcome, everyone. I've never had the introduction of an awesome CEO, so thanks for saying that. I um, want to give you a little bit of background about myself in an introduction and, and uh, really appreciate everyone joining us today. Um, I grew up in a tiny town in central Montana, Stanford, Montana. And so I always like to say um, I graduated top of my class from Stanford. So uh, uh, 20 people in my class in high school, but it was 20. So um, I have to get credit for that. But uh, from Stanford, Montana, um, if any of you are out there from Bozeman, Montana State University, that's where I went to college, so I hope there's some MSU grads out there. Um, I started my career, um, I began with KPMG and spent about 16 years there and joined our firm through a merger. We, we have lots of mergers within our firm, and I, I joined the firm in 2006, and really throughout my career, I've been a client service person. I really love serving clients. I love working with people, uh, developing people, mentoring. I love recruiting. I like building teams and really through that process, I've had the great opportunity to have some service and leadership opportunities in the firm. Uh, that started, I was a tax department head in our billings office. I've been our, on our retirement committee, uh, was elected to two terms on our board of directors. I got to be chair of our board and then I was the head of our tax practice for a few years. And then about a year ago was elected to be our next managing partner and CEO of the firm. And so that's been a great opportunity. Um, I'm really honored and privileged and humbled to really uh, serve the firm in that capacity. So again, thanks for joining. I've done lots of campus recruiting throughout my career and I really enjoy getting to talk to students and, and talk about our firm, especially talking about culture today. So uh, being new uh, in the role, I just started really officially May 1st as uh, CEO of the firm. And so I've made lots of uh, trips around the country visiting our offices and our people. And when I go to our office, I like to show this picture. Um, and it's not just because I'm a proud dad, but I, I like to show a picture of my three daughters, Gentry, Ainsley, and Finley. And it's really because it's what I value most in my life. Talk about what is it that I value most in my life. It's my family, my wife, Monica, and my three daughters. When I think about our firm, and ask the question, what do we value most about our firm? And, and really, that's simple. It's our culture. And so I love today that we're talking about culture, introducing that to you. Really, as the CEO and managing partner, it's my responsibility to be the, cult, the custodian of our culture and really ensure that we hold true uh, to our purpose and our values um, in everything that we do. And, and I want to talk about our purpose and values, because I think that's what really brings our culture to life. I strongly believe in the power of purpose. And I also think that when we combine our purpose with our passion and our energy, I think we define success more than just by numbers, by our revenue. We define success by the impact that we will make. And so what is our purpose at iBailey? I want, want to introduce that to you, our purpose and our values. 
our purpose, we talk about purpose, it's our why. What's our why for doing what we do? And I think that's really important to connect with our why for what we do every day. And so this is our purpose statement. It's to foster impactful doing by growing our people, elevating our clients and strengthening our communities. And I start with what is impactful doing? I think of all these things, we talk about people, clients, communities, impactful doing, I really think that says a lot. Doing to me is action. It's getting to it. And impactful is making a difference. And I think about making a difference. What is the impact that we make at I, I Bailey? It's our values. And here's our, our core values. When we talk about values at I Bailey, our impact. We talk about integrity, meaningful relationships, people, authenticity, culture, and trust. So I'll start with integrity. Uh, our profession, just if you're here joining from an accounting program, you hear about our profession, our profession is built around the uh, pillars of integrity and ethics, and so are we. So we choose to do what's right over what's fast and easy. We practice our values when no one is watching. We value meaningful relationships. Uh, the head of our audit practice, Ben Ellingson, who's also the chair of our board right now, Ben talks about going to campus as he does lots of recruiting. And he says, I always get asked the question, what do I do every day? What is it that I do as an I Bailey partner? And he always says, I build relationships. That's what we do. We serve passionately. We're motivated by making meaningful relationships with our people and our clients. We value our people. And I always say at the most basic level, we're in the people business. I I quote um, the former president of, of Starbucks, Howard Behar, and he was quoted as saying, we're not in the coffee business serving people. We're in the people business serving coffee. And I think that's the same for us. We're not really in the accounting business serving people. We're in the people business. We offer accounting services, whether it's tax audit, um, accounting, uh, consulting technology. That's what we offer. But at the end of the day, we're really about experiences. We're about those relationships uh, with others. And, and I think you'll find that within our firm and within our culture statement. We talk about enriching experiences and flexibility, caring for one another, supporting each other's passions. We also value authenticity. We encourage everyone to be genuine, their full authentic selves. I think if you can do that every day, just come to work as you are. You're going to give your best and get your best. And I think that's something we talk about our journey with DEI, being a diverse, equitable, and inclusive workforce. That's very important to us. We're on that journey. I think at the end of the day, it's not only doing the right thing, it makes us better both um, as people and as an organization. So we value authenticity. We value culture. I already said that, that it's what we value most about our firm. You're going to see in our culture statement we're going to show you today care, respect, balance, having fun. They're the heart of our culture statement. And we value trust. We talk about being trusted business advisors. You know, at the end of the day, it's really about trust. It's, it's, not, um, it's not about being an advisor, but it's that trusted part that we really value. Um, we want to inspire others to have trust in us. Um, our culture, we talk about our culture, we talk about purpose and values and, and those things bringing our culture to life. Uh, this picture here um, really is, is to depict a fabled story. It's about when President Kennedy first visited NASA in the early 1960s. He comes to NASA, he sees a man in the hallway with a broom and he introduces himself. He says, hello, my name is uh, President Kennedy. What do you do here? The man with the broom says, well, Mr. President, I'm helping to put a man on the moon. Now, I don't know if this meeting actually took place. It's kind of a common story to talk about engagement, the power of engagement, the power of a workforce motivated by a strong sense of a greater purpose. This person here wasn't to clean the floors. This person was to help to send a man on the moon. So I think it's important for all of us to understand what it looks like to live our purpose, our why. And so I really wanna show you a video. What does it look like every day for our people, the impact that they make. I'll try and play this video for you. When we look into the future and we start talking about uh, Vision 2030, we start to think about what is our purpose. And at Ike Bailey, I would say our purpose is to foster impactful doing by growing our people, elevating our clients, and strengthening our communities. That's the core 
what we're all about. That's something we need to embed in everything that we do on a daily basis. When we invest in our people, that allows us to serve our clients at a different level. It really comes down to meaningful relationships. We develop relationships with our clients so we can understand their businesses, so we can help them with their needs, and at the end of the day, be there when they need us. I think with any business, you know, people is key, and our relationship with Ike Bailey has really been critical for that. You know, we've developed relationships with multiple people there, and every time we come away feeling better, we feel like the business is better, and that's why we continue to keep expanding our relationship and keep doing more and more with them. Security is a very, very complicated field to be in. Ike Bailey has been great to work with. They're responsive, they're timely, they're educated. It just makes my job so much easier to have someone that I know on the other end is taking care of the things that we need to take care of for us, and they'll be doing it in a quick, efficient, and with high level of skill. We have a real passion at Ike Bailey to be trusted business advisors. Beyond that, we want to have an impact in our communities, and we do that by investing not only our time, our energy, and our resources, but we do that by being part of the communities in which we live. Here at I Bailey, all of our offices are invested in giving back to the communities that we're a part of. Volunteering is such a big piece of that, but each of these communities gives back to us, so we in turn need to give back to them. In Denver, we recently had three events in three days. The first one was a blood drive that we actually were able to host in office where people could take 30 to 45 minutes out of their day and donate a little bit of blood. The second event was the Furry Scurry, which supports our local animal shelter. And here in Denver, it's a big deal. Lots of dogs, about 10,000 walk around a 5K. The third event is called Fight for Air, where we climb through the Rocky Stadium and participants raise funds for the American Lung Association. These fashions and these events can reignite excitement in our organization and organizations throughout the community. They give us an opportunity to be involved and have good words spoken about us, but they also give perspective and one more reason to get out of your chair and go volunteer. I feel deeply that our people are powered by our purpose. And our purpose is impactful doing. How do we go forward from today and make sure that that purpose is embedded in our culture so that we do make an impact for our people, our clients, and our communities? Yeah, I think that's a great video. It really gets to the core of when we talk about our culture and we talk about what is our purpose and our impact at Ike Bailey. Here's just something I wanted to show you at our partner meeting uh, we had in June, all of our partners get together. And what we started was a wall of purpose. Here's a picture of me with our keynote speaker, John Foley, who is a former Blue Angel, gave a great keynote uh, address to us talking about purpose and passion um, and gratitude. Uh, really, at the end of the day, uh, we, we then uh, all had a, a paper and, and pens at our, our desk and we wrote, what is our impact? What is the impact we make on our people, our clients and our communities? We started this wall of purpose, something to socialize throughout the year. I'm hoping by the end of this year, we'll have 2,951 uh, notes on our wall of purpose to really demonstrate the impact that we make. So I'm gonna pass this on now to Lisa Fitzgerald. Uh, again, I want to thank you for being here. It really means a lot to us that, that you're participating today and, and viewing I Bailey. We're sure excited to visit with you and show you a little bit more about our firm and uh, the culture, which, as this shows, is the foundation of our success. Lisa, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Jeremy. That video makes me cry every single time. So I'm like, oh, I gotta gotta get myself together here before I before I talk with you all. Um, again, my name is Lisa Fitzgerald. I'm the Chief Human Resources Officer at I Bailey. I have been with the firm 15 years this week, and I'll be very honest with you, I never thought I would stay anywhere for 15 years, um, but I'm here truly because of the culture. So the statement that you see on, on the slide is our culture statement. It's really important to us, as you probably have gathered. Um, that statement is used for marketing purposes. It's used uh, internally. It's on walls and in break rooms and offices and, and all over the place. So it's really important. To me, a culture statement 
is really kind of our guide for how we behave, how we interact with other people, um, how we hold ourselves and others accountable. So it's really, it's really important to us. But I, the words are great. They're fabulous. But to me, culture is really more about a feeling. It's how I feel when I walk through the halls. It, it's when I'm in the office. <laughs> it's how I feel when I interact with my coworkers. That's what culture is. Culture to me is a million small moments that we encounter um, when we're when we're at work. And sometimes when we're not at work, right? When we're volunteering or let's let's be honest, people at work become your friends. So it, it's the thank yous that we say to each other. It's the picking up and helping someone else when they're having a tough tough day or something personally is going on. It's those moments that we have hopefully all day long, every day, that really lead to what culture is all about. And I'm I'm also extremely passionate about it, about making sure we create an environment that um, that is safe for us to all have have those moments. So one of the culture statements there is about balance. And I um, I have raised two children. Well, I guess my youngest is 16, so I'm supposed to still be raising him, right? But I raised these two children, and I have needed a ton of flexibility in my life um, for sporting events and sick kids and all the things. And even this summer for some some stuff, health issues with the parent. And I really appreciated the flexibility that I daily offers in terms of when I work and where I work. That's just one piece of balance for me personally. Um, we have different statuses where maybe I'm full-time now, but two years from now, maybe something will change in my life and I need to work full-time or three-quarter time or something. And there's all of those, all of those options. Um, we have great PTO, of course, and we've really this year worked to build in some additional holidays to align with our DEI initiatives for certain, um, and then also to give some breaks of time off. So we have the 5th of July off because who really wants to go to work on the 5th of July, right? Um, we added the Friday before Memorial Day to give ourselves a longer time to decompress, but also to honor and recognize what Memorial Day is truly, truly about. One other really cool benefit we kicked off about a year and a half ago is a lifestyle spending account. And this account is really meant to help you with all things related to balance in your life. So I may choose, it's $500 or $800, depending on how long you've been here each year. And I may choose, a, I wanna pay for my gym membership out of that account because that's important for me, it's a stress reliever. Or I have student loans and I could really use a break from those loans this month. So I'm gonna use that money to make a payment or hopefully more than one um, towards my, my student loans. Or I have to travel and I need to kennel my pet and I can use those funds for that. So that was our way of creating something that helps each person where meet them where they're at in terms of helping them um, them find balance. So, okay, so here to talk to you today about her experience with work-life balance is Montana. Montana is a tax manager from our Salt Lake City office. Thank you so much, Lisa. Um, I feel so honored to be here. Um, and I was I was really pumped when I was given the you know the area of discussion of work life balance because I truly believe I Bailey has has excelled uh, in this area especially with with me and so as I was kind of thinking about um, my experience and my time here uh, I really tried to come down to just a couple different um, experiences where I have felt um, and I'm going to call it life work balance where I've truly felt that. Um, my bosses, the the partners, and and all of my coworkers who are you know some of my best friends have really helped me uh, see that they value my life before my work. And and so the the one big um, experience that really sticks out to me is it was my second tax season here. So I'm fairly new. Um, really, I'm I'm probably not adding a whole ton of value yet. Um, and it's about February and one of my immediate family members uh, gets really, really sick. And my family is, is so close. And so immediately I was all in on, on, on helping my family. And uh, that family member uh, spent 
the whole month of February and March in, in the ICU. And so I basically spent the whole month of February and March at, at the ICU. And I remember the first week I was kind of trying to balance uh, things and I was, was really low on my hour goals, which to me at the time felt like a big deal. Um, and I'm sure my work product wasn't, you know, top quality. I was, I was working from the hospital. And so I went into the office the following Monday and I, I wasn't there for, for five minutes and immediately a partner pulls me in and says, hey, what are you doing here? Like, go be with your family. Let's go through your workload. And all of my, my coworkers, coworkers who, you know, I previously said are, are really some of my best friends. They, they picked up um, my workload and for that whole busy season, I really wasn't that much help, um, but I never once felt pressured. I never once felt bad about it. I felt fully supported that I needed to be where I felt like I needed to be, and that was with my family. Um, so I guess to, to kind of wrap it all up, uh, I think you can have all of the HR policies in the world that, that, that say, they support culture, but in my experience at Ide Bailey, what it really comes down to is just there are genuinely good people here, and there are people that care about you and that put your life uh, before your work. So there, to me, there's a life-work balance here, uh, which I'm truly, truly grateful for. Awesome. Thank you, Montana, for sharing your story, and it is giveaway time. Um, the first giveaway that we're giving away is a year-long subscription to the Calm app. Um, so all iBailey employees get a year-long subscription, a premium subscription, um, and we want to give that to one of you. The sleep stories are my favorite. I just used one last night. They always put me to sleep right away, and I get a great night of sleep. Our winner for this giveaway is um, Jacenia Flores. So if you stay on through this whole webinar, we will follow up with you and make sure that you, um, we get you set up for that subscription. So with that being said, I'm going to turn it back over to Lisa to introduce our next speaker. All right. Thanks, Carrie. So another one of the statements of our culture statement is caring for our external and internal clients with a passion to go the extra mile. And so when I think about this from my perspective, I think about how lucky I am that my job, my whole job, my, my the HR team's job is really to ensure that our internal clients, which to me is our candidates and our staff, have the best experience possible. So make sure needs are met and make sure we have the very, very best um, experience that we can here. So what a great job, right? Now, if any of you are in accounting, I'm sure you're wanting to switch to human resources right now, but a really phenomenal job. From an external side, um, of course, our clients are the people that we do work for, um, right? That we have to we have to have those clients, but it's also the communities that we that we serve, the communities that we reside in, and I really recognizes that. I think you saw that in the video, but we also um, encourage volunteering. So in departments or offices, there are many many volunteer events. Again, that you you saw in the video. In addition to that, we give every employee eight hours of volunteer time. So when my children were smaller, I was in their schools a lot using my, my eight hours of volunteer time a year. Now that my kids are a little older, I have found some other passions and places that I like to volunteer, but we think it's important to give back. And again, you, you can do that individually and you'll do that in offices or other teams as well. In addition, we have some matching donations. So if I if I give to a cause that's really important to me, the firm will match up to $200 um, in that space as well. So we love our communities. We're very supportive of our, our communities. We, it's, it's important to be involved and to give back. And here to talk a little bit about that is Kostev. Kostev is a forensic accounting manager from our Minneapolis office. Hello, thank you. Yeah, so this is my name is Costa Chakrabarthi. Like um, like Lisa said, I'm a manager in the Minneapolis office. I'm part of our fraud and forensics advisory team. So I actually grew up in the Washington DC area, moved up here to the upper Midwest, up here in Minneapolis uh, three years ago. And, you know, like Jeremy and then kind of uh, Lisa have touched on, you know, trying to make it make an impact here at I Bailey, making a difference. Um, it's trying to, you know, strengthen communities. So, you know, one of the things I first got involved with 
while starting here is the uh, Community Service Committee, which we have here in Minneapolis. And, you know, it was partly to meet, to meet folks here. Um, and then also just because, you know, it was an interest that I had to get, to get involved with the community, um, with other people in the firm, and also just kind of, um, you know, learn more about the, the Minnesota area, the, the new state that I, I moved to. And so, you know, our, our committee, it's, there are eight of us on the committee here in Minneapolis, and we usually serve two-year terms, and we meet, uh, you know, every couple months, and then there's emails, and we're always planning out all kinds of different things that we can do. So we do a whole number of things. Um, it's sort of like just a long list, but, you know, clothing drives, um, you know, funding, uh, you know, fundraising initiatives, um, specific volunteer events, you know, again, simple things like donating blood, food drives, there's always something that's going on. You know, there's always an email that we send out once a month. We call it the CSC, Community Service Committee uh, newsletter, where we just talk about different initiatives coming up and that sort of thing. Um, and then, like Lisa said, firm allots eight hours of time that you can use to volunteer. And so we kind of use that and we actually select a, a volunteer of the month every month and just kind of highlight, you know, what that person did, you know, usually provide us a brief description that we can share. And it's a way to kind of um, encourage others to, you know, use those hours and, and also be involved. Um, so like I said, we do a lot of things. You know, one of the first things that I did, I'll just, I'll just mention a couple neat events, um, in my opinion, that, that we've done since I've been here. You know, one of the first things I did, um, there was a, at the Ronald McDonald House across the Mississippi River over in um, actually another part of Minneapolis. We just served dinner there one night. So there were, you know, uh, kids there, and you know there are five, five or six of us. And we just served pizza one night at this Ronald McDonald House. And again, it was kind of a neat activity. It's fun to um, just meet colleagues and also you know contribute. One of the initiatives that I kind of spearheaded is uh, kind of a partnership, I guess I'd call it, with the Division of Indian Work, which is a Native American nonprofit here in Minneapolis. And this is a really great organization. They do all kinds of things. Um, you know, they provide education to kids. Uh, daycare. Uh, they actually have a, a teen mother house where teen mothers can live there for, I think, up to six months or a year. And they just kind of help them out, um, uh, you know, during that time period. And, you know, we've tried to kind of not just have our partnership with them just be a one time thing, but really more of a continuing relationship. So last summer, a bunch of us went out there and planted, um, you know, all these plants in a, in, a, in a garden that they had out there and did some painting and landscaping uh, for that nonprofit. We did another event where we just kind of went there and just rolled up our sleeves and cleaned the kitchen, um, all the grease off of all the uh, cooking equipment and that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, we've done things like help organize their, uh, there's kind of like a, like a nursing daycare center there. You know, we created baby care bags, homeless care bags, um, and provided these packages for, um, for, uh, you know, people that use use that nonprofit. And so again, you know, we've been doing that that three events there, in-person volunteer events. And so we have hope to continue that relationship. And I've really enjoyed it. The, exec the executive director has been really appreci appreciative and um, really likes it. You know, we have an, something coming up uh, soon is a uh, walk to end Alzheimer's. So we're hosting a team for that walk. Uh, you know, we've even very minor things like uh, we did a dress for success kind of a thing where we collected women's clothing in the lobby of our building and then took that to this nonprofit. And that was something that didn't really take a lot of time, but you know, we just, um, uh, we kind of worked actually with a building property manager and they they um, set that up. And again, we collected clothing, you know, Joyce Uptown Food Shelf, we collected non-expired shelf stable foods and household items for the local community. And maybe just a couple others I'll mention is Toys for Tots, you know, we collect tots. And one cool thing about that is, and I haven't been, I haven't experienced this yet, but Sometimes um, the team will actually get to go on TV. So they come to the Toys for Tots and uh, there's like a local TV station here uh, that promotes it. And the last thing I'll mention, it's not, it's kind of related to our committee, um, but uh, there was a Page Foundation gala here about, you know, six or seven months ago where, um, you know, our firm has kind of a partnership with, it, with them. And there's a gala down over here, uh, the Vikings Stadium. It's actually pretty cool because it's the first time I got to, check out this kind of exclusive club level, club level access at this gala. It was a really good, great event because they uh, raised a lot of money for this nonprofit. And I actually got to 
um, see Alan Page, who is a former uh, purple people, people eater of the Vikings and uh, also uh, former state Supreme Court justice. So that was kind of neat. But there are a lot of other events we do. Um, but like I said, it's been a really great experience and I think it exemplifies um, you know, one of the core values of the firm. Thank you. Awesome, thank you so much. That means it's time for our second giveaway. Um, so for this giveaway, we are giving away a $100 donation to a nonprofit organization of your choosing. So we wanna help support organizations that you are passionate about. So our second winner is Christopher Rays. So Christopher, make sure you stay on the whole webinar and we will um, get in touch with you. That being said, um, we are gonna turn it back over to Lisa. All right, thanks everyone. Uh, another one of our, our culture statements and a really, really important one is, and most of all, enjoying our jobs and having fun. And quite frankly, I don't tell Jeremy, but there are days where I have so much fun that I'm really not sure I should be paid. <laughs> so this is a great place for fun. It's a great place to build teams and camaraderie, but we do all kinds of crazy events. Sometimes they're virtual coffees and, and virtual games. Other times it's food trucks in our in our uh, parking lot or summer picnics or movie night. Um, but I'm going to tell you what, of all the places I work, this is a place that knows how to have fun. And the guy that I know at this firm that has the most fun is Blake Crow. Blake is a tax partner in Des Moines, and I know he's going to share some stories about fun with you all. Yeah, thanks, Lisa. I'm, you have to be careful. Uh, it probably says, you know, I don't know if it says more about the firm or me that if you can be known as the person that has the most fun in the entire firm and, and still have a fairly successful career here, I guess that's probably a positive. Um, but yeah, as Lisa mentioned, I am a tax partner and the market leader of our Des Moines market. Um, and, and as Lisa alluded to, we talk about our culture statement all the time. And whenever we're talking to outside parties, uh, whenever we have groups of students in, or we're talking about the firm to prospective clients, we always talk about the culture statement. And I was really, really happy when they asked me if I would do this piece, because I literally, every time I talk about the culture statement, I end my comments with, and my personal favorite part is the last line and having fun. Uh, and here, you know, I think all of the offices do great things, uh, but I was just going to maybe quickly touch on a handful of the great things that we've done here just recently to maybe give you a little sampling or flavor of what those things might look like. And then I'll just touch on one in a little bit more depth. But really, you know, in the last um, kind of fiscal years, we've gone around, we actually do so many things, I couldn't hardly remember them all. I had to go back and, and verify through my calendar what, what all we had actually done. So, you know, since basically the beginning of last busy season through today, we have, as an office, we've gone bowling. Uh, we've gone to a minor league baseball game. Uh, and that was a joint event with our Dubuque office to get the two offices kind of introduced and, and networking and getting to know each other better. Uh, we, we had a golf outing. We had a ping pong tournament. We had our holiday party um, at, a, at a giant arcade and pickleball court. Uh, just this coming week, we're actually going to the state fair as an office. Um, so just tons and tons of great things. Um, but the thing that I'm probably like most proud of, and probably because it's you know something that I have a connection with, but we actually have uh, a large sponsorship uh, and we're involved with uh, a half marathon here in Des Moines. And so I think the first thing that I always tell people that I'm just so impressed by on that is most people, like if you're thinking, okay, we're talking fun, like half of you or probably more, probably 90% of you, maybe just like half marathon, like we're deviating away from fun. But here it's been great. It's been a great activity. So we're in office. We probably like in the mid fifties for headcount, we're probably about 55 people here in the office. And over the last number of years, we average between 10 and 12 people um, that have run the half marathon as a group. So we'll do training runs, we'll go out on the weekends, we'll run. Uh, and then as a group, uh, we ran the half marathon. And so I think even just that, right, if you can get 12 people out of 55 to commit to running a half marathon together, like probably nothing could speak more to the culture of, of you know, people accomplishing something together outside the workplace than, than a challenge as great as a half marathon. But what I actually really love about this specific race is, is through our partnership with the race for, for those who aren't runners or don't want to run, uh, we actually do something called the Ide Bailey Fan Zone at the at the three mile mark, uh, where we set up and basically all the rest of our staff who are running are out there right away early in the morning, seven o'clock in the morning with literally cases and cases of Ide Bailey cowbells and thunder sticks and signs and markers that they're handing out. And they have a DJ that's there like playing music over these loudspeakers. And so, you know, we really get to take kind of this Ide Bailey culture and this Ide Bailey fun and really expand it to all of the fans watching their family and loved ones and friends running, uh, kind of share some of that positive energy with people uh, as they're kind of getting that first part of the half marathon underway. And so when you come around, you kind of come around a corner in the race and you'll see 20 eyed Bailey people and a couple hundred other 
you know, fans and spectators there all with, again, I'd Bailey cowbells, I'd Bailey thundersticks, noisemakers, kind of cheering, hollering, making signs for you. And so it was just the coolest thing. Uh, the race director actually sent me a video this year. He kind of rides a scooter behind the race and he took his cell phone and kind of drove down the line of all the people with all the I Bailey stuff and cheering. And like, to me, it was just like the greatest embodiment uh, of our culture and really embodying that fun and just an awesome thing. And just one of the great examples of all the ways that we have fun here in the office. So um, with that, I know Carrie's got another gift to give away, so I'll hand it back to her. Yes, thank you so much, Blake. And to help you all have a little bit of fun, our next giveaway is a $100 Airbnb gift card, hoping you can use it to, you know, go on a fun vacation. So our winner for this is Stephanie Familia. So Stephanie, make sure you stay on throughout the rest of the webinar, and we will make sure to get you that gift card. We are now moving on to our career exploration panel. And I know we've gotten lots of awesome questions. Um, so at this time, I'm just gonna introduce our panelists and then we're gonna start asking questions. Um, we likely will not get to all of them, but hopefully we'll get to a majority of the, of, you know, some of the, the main themes. On our panel today, we have James Ramsey, who is an audit partner out of Sacramento, California. We have Haley Barajas, who is a tax manager out of Phoenix, Arizona. We have Kristen Tate, who is a business valuation senior manager from Minnesota, and Catherine March, who is a NetSuite consulting manager. So she is on our technology consulting team from, from Sioux Falls. Um, so Amy, at this time, if you could stop sharing the PowerPoint, awesome. Um, so welcome panelists. We've got lots of great questions from our students. Um, been writing them down as people have been submitting them. And so um, to start off, I know, you know, it's we're gearing up for another semester of school. Um, people are going to start looking for opportunities. They're going to start looking to apply. And I know a few of you for sure have been involved in interviews. Um, so Kristen and James, I'm going to pick on you for this one. Um, when you are interviewing students for internships or some of those entry level opportunities, what are you looking for in that interview? Um, what tips can you give our, our, our people on the webinar today? Go for it, Kristen. <laughs> All right. Well, I love interviewing. And what I really love about it is when students come in and they have enthusiasm for what they, you know, for getting into a job in the accounting field and not saying that you have to come in and be like overly excited about everything, but the enthusiasm to want to learn a new skill and to see what public accounting has to offer. I think it really just says a, a lot about you, what you would be like to work with in the field. Um, so technical skills, we're going to teach you that. Like that's something that college can prepare you so far, but the rest of it's on us. So you don't have to necessarily show us in that interview just how smart you are necessarily. We want to see that, but not necessarily there. But I like to see enthusiasm. I like to see people excited about an opportunity and willing to say yes when they get on the job site. Um, and for me, the other thing is that's not always, it doesn't mean an extrovert. I am an extrovert. But for a lot of people, you can show that enthusiasm in so many ways, whether it's, you know, just being engaged in the conversation and having great questions to ask at the tail end of it. Um, or just showing that you've done your research and that this is truly in an opportunity you're really interested in pursuing. Those are what I like to see. Yeah, so for me, kind of leveraging off the enthusiasm pieces, I had I, interviews is kind of a misnomer. You know, you got a set of questions that we ask, and you know, you go back and forth, back and forth. I actually prefer to have conversations with people. You know, if you can ask a question and get that conversation going, whether I'm asking the question and you can leverage off that to have a conversation, or um, you ask the question to get to get a conversation going, um, if the interview experience is going to be that much more enjoyable. If there if there is a conversation and typically when you've got that enthusiasm for a particular topic or for a job or you know some excitement you can really leverage that into that conversation and, and go from there so and then the other piece like Kristen mentioned is um knowing who you're talking to so doing research not just on the company but if you have the opportunity to do research on the person that um <clears throat> that you're interviewing with you know for example you know people love talking about themselves and so when you ask them a question about, hey, you know, what are your hobbies or, you know, I see that you've done this um, <clears throat> shows that you've really looked into that, that you actually have that interest for the job. Um, and so being able to engage somebody like that, um, you know, I know there's a lot of introverts, you know, accounting profession is mostly known by introverts, but that doesn't mean you can't have a conversation. Everybody's got friends and has, you know, events that they go to that they can have a conversation with. So we're not asking you to be talk to a large group of people, just one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one, so. 
Awesome. Thank you for those tips. And we've gotten a lot of questions today. You hear I daily, you know, we, we are, we are a big name in the accounting space being a top 20 firm. Um, and a lot of people maybe don't know that we also have this technology consulting division and specialty services and all of these other things. Um, and so Kristen and Catherine, if you both could expand um, in your, you know, specialty areas, but also Catherine and technology co consulting outside of the typical audit and tax. Um, could you both just cover a few of those things that, you know, students could go into and in kind of a broader scope in tech, you know, specialty or technology consulting? Yeah, so from the tech consulting side, um, like Carrie is mentioning, we have everything. <laughs> Seems like we're expanding every day. So, I mean, we've got data analytics, um, ERP implementations. That's the team that I'm on. Um, optimization. How can we improve your business process design and make you more efficient and really improve start to finish your your business or maybe just one area maybe it's just inventory movement or maybe it's just um people management um so our we have cybersecurity. i know that i saw a lot of folks interested in cybersecurity. um that are folks that can come in and do an analysis of your firm and or your organization and where maybe your weaknesses and your strengths lie and where you can improve um really anything any software that's out there we have a lot of microsoft uh, consulting, um, improving your, your communications within your organization using like Teams or Outlook or the other Microsoft services that are out there. Um, Sage, Dynamics, most of the ERP or accounting systems that are out there, we offer consulting in both, both optimization and implementation. Um, so kind of all, most things that you can imagine, I think we do in consulting and in technology consulting at this point. Kristen, I'll let you go ahead on the other specialty services. So I'm in the business valuation group, and I like to think of business valuation as this beautiful place between accounting and finance. Um, we have grads coming from both of those programs, and they both find that their skill sets really help them, but they also have to learn a little bit about the other one. But that's just part of rounding out how you become good at your job, right? And so business valuation is really understanding a business's operations to determine what the value of that is in the marketplace. Um, our services are used for a lot of different purposes. One of them is gifting or estate planning. So if you have a business interest and you are looking to transition it to the next generation, or if somebody passes away and it's now a taxable estate, the IRS says, we have to know what the business of, what the value of this business is because otherwise everybody would always just say zero and um, nobody would ever be taxed for estate taxes. And so we step in and we help with those compliance-based valuations. Uh, we work in the litigation space. So whether there's a marital asset at the heart of a, you know, in a divorce that is a business and we need to help them to understand the value of it so that way they can complete the, the marital dissolution. Um, we help in shareholder disputes, that type of thing, or just in transactions, which transactions are incredibly fun. It's something that I found a lot of, a lot of joy in working in that space, working with people who are making a big move, whether it's, you know, some additional making an acquisition or they're trying to offload something and it's a big moment for them. And it's exciting to be able to help through that. Awesome. Thank you both for sharing about many, many opportunities here at Ag Bailey. There's we could probably use this entire webinar to talk about the different opportunities. Um, and so, you know, another question that we've been getting from quite a few people is about certifications and the CPA exam. So I know we've got, you know, a lot of other certifications out there other than just the CPA exam. CPA is probably most common for those that are in accounting, but I know we've got a variety of majors. Um, I'm guessing you all have some sort of certification, if not your CPA exam. Um, so maybe Haley, I'll start with you. Do you want to kind of share your journey? And um, I know we've gotten a lot of questions of how does I Bailey support you in that that journey to get maybe your CPA exam or another certification? Um, yeah, I, it's been a while since I took the test, but I think I know how I Bailey supports. Um, but maybe someone can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, they offer Becker, so that was something that I used. I interned with I Bailey signed a full-time offer and then used Becker in the next year or so while I was completing my grad program to simultaneously study and get um, my last few credits. It was very tough, but I am glad I pushed through. So once I started work, I'd fully completed all my exams and just needed to finish my hours to officially become certified. Um, that's not the path everyone takes. I was very lucky to be able to swing studying and going to school at the same time and not having to work. So if that's you, congrats. Um, but if not, it's totally doable to study during a busy season 
and work around it and try to make uh, make the best of those first couple of years where all the school stuff still fresh. So I Bailey provides Becker. Um, I feel like they're very supportive of our staff as they're trying to get their CPA exams done. As long as you're communicating, hey, I have a test coming up and and um, with your managers about how you're going to make up your work hours while trying to get this very important certification done at the same time. Um, but yeah, I think that's, I think Becker's provided and, and or test prep fees. Uh, that might be a Carrie or Lisa question, but yeah, it was great. I'm glad I got it done. Yeah, so we do provide Becker. We also partner with a company called UWorld, which is similar to Becker, um, providing similar materials. So those study materials, um, as well as, yes, covering the exam fees. If you're pursuing something outside of the CPA exam, we also help cover the study materials for that. So as long as it relates to the work that you're doing, I know in technology consulting or some of our other departments, um, there's other certifications that maybe make more sense for those careers. And so we do cover the, um, help cover the cost of those certifications. We wanna make sure that you're getting that relevant um, certification or knowledge that you feel you need in order to be successful. Um, Another another question that we've gotten from quite a few people, I'm just looking at my notes here, um, is all around flexible working schedules, remote work. Um, you know, I, I think the pandemic really changed a lot of that for a lot of companies. Um, and so I would love, you know, if anyone has things that they want to share about this, especially at that intern level, you know, what is I Bailey's kind of view and how do we help people um, get some of that work-life balance through flexible schedules and possibly remote work. Does anyone want to share their experience with it? Sure. <laughs> um, so, you know, an account's favorite answer is it depends. Um, so in my world, in the audit world, uh, we do have some interns. Um, we, as far as remote work, it's a much more difficult to train our interns with uh, in a remote environment. But that's not to say it can't be done. So if you know you're an exceptional candidate, and you know you're, you know out out in the boonies that you know that it's tough for you to be near an office, we can definitely make that work. You know, depending on your schedule, maybe with your school is going to be you know further out from one of our offices, we can make that work. Um, and and so as far as our remote status goes. Um, we have teams that we have quite a few people that are actually fully remote, 100% remote that, you know, they live all across the country. Um, they provide services. So for example, uh, you know, we've got somebody who works in North Carolina that provides services in California. And, uh, you know, and so we do have that transcontinental um, ability to switch over to that. Um, so we're pretty flexible in allowing our staff and our uh, managers and, and everybody to work remotely for the most part. Um, if you if you know we can definitely pivot to if you decide to move to um an office where uh or move to a region where there is no office we can definitely accommodate uh, accommodate that um so it just requires discussion coordination um a lot of uh, a lot of meetings and going back and forth so Yes, I know we've gotten a lot of questions about interns being remote. Um, when you're looking at our job site, if an internship is open to remote, that will be um, in the job title. It will say remote eligible. So it really at the intern level depends on location and department, um, especially at that intern level, we're going to see a lot of them either being a hybrid or in the office. So make sure you're just looking at those positions, reaching out if you have questions. Um, but just someone want to share their experience with that, that flexible schedule um, and maybe think back to when you first started. I know most of you are a few years into your career and so that definitely changes as you get further. Um, but does someone want to share, you know, that flexibility that you were able to utilize when you were early in your career? We did I saw you nodding your head or James, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say we didn't have teleconferencing when at the beginning of my career, but um, we do have somebody I did have uh, one of my interns that you know, I'm based out of Sacramento and I had one of my interns out of Chico, which is about two hours away. And that person was able to, you know, I'm not going to have that person come in two, two or three days a week to, you know, do to do work. So we actually we were able to coordinate with him to get work done and to teach him. You know, this is the audit environment. This is this is how we usually do things. We set up virtual conference rooms, um, and we also partnered him with a, a what we call an eye guide, which is somebody who is that is a a go to for that intern to ask the questions that he's too scared to ask the in charge or the manager or the partner. 
Um, so we do have, that's another one of our uh, items that we do. So again, I wasn't able to go through that remote environment just because, you know, we didn't have that kind of technology back then. <laughs> but, you know, we've had a, we've had some successes and that, that intern actually got a full-time job offer because he did so well and um, works for us now. Um, so he's, so that the process does work. So for the remote environment. So Carrie, I can expand on that further. I've actually been fully remote since 2013. My husband took a new job farming, which you cannot do in a city, it turns out. So I went to the director of my group, who at that time, um, working remotely wasn't really a thing yet, but he was very much like, yes, we want to keep you. And so let's figure out how to make this work. I see my team, I'm only two hours away. So similar to James, the situation you just said, I'm about two hours away from my team and I go and see them a couple times a month usually, but we still have so many touch points that it doesn't at this point impede our ability to work together. Um, valuation is a consulting service that supports the firm footprint. So we are not geographic based. Um, and so because of that, we're already used to working in a remote capacity. So I think that that helps, right? Like, I think that it helps knowing that whether I'm working with staff that are two hours away from me or whether I'm working with staff that are five states away from me, it's still a very similar experience. But I would say that, like Carrie said at, at the beginning, that we do certainly have those opportunities and that we have seen a lot of remote test cases um, that have went really well. So I think that right now, firm-wide, we do have the ability to have some, once you've been in your job for a little bit, you can have some time in and out of the office each week. So there are some people that like to take a day to work from home or whatever it might be, but we have seen great successes there, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. And even if you're in the office, you know, I really strongly support that that balance that Montana talked about earlier. So whether that means you, you know, need to leave early one day or you come in a little bit later, you take off during the day to, to go to an appointment or whatever it might be, we really want to make sure that, you know, you have that flexibility in your work day to work when and how is best for you. So um, we are coming up on time. So I want to wrap up and I'm going to ask all of you this question. Um, we got a question of what's your, your happiest experience while working here. I think that's a great way to end. I'd love for you all to share. And for simplicity's sake, I, I'm just going to start with Haley, then we'll go to Catherine, Kristen, and then James will have you wrap up. So share your happiest experience, maybe that I Bailey 360 moment that we've been sharing, um, and we'll wrap up that way. So mine is relates to the I'd guide that was mentioned. So I feel like we started pushing it a lot in Phoenix in the last couple years, specifically starting after the pandemic. And needing to make a lot of connections online. And I was asked to be an eye guide. I've had two now that have graduated, I guess, and they're eye guides themselves. And I just say that whole process of, I'm at a level now where I can invest in other people and be a mentor. And that's been really exciting. Um, I've had a lot of great mentors within the firm. And so I've been really enjoying being that for some other of the new staff that are getting started. So that's mine. I'll go. Um, so I participated in our exchange program in iBailey, which is basically like an internal internship where you can go try out other service areas of the firm. So I started an audit. I was in, with the audit department for four years and then made a move, much like Kirsten, my husband got a job. Um, so I was in a more rural area and I found that a lot of my clients like couldn't get the audit documentation that I needed out of their um, their current technology, their current accounting system. So I did the exchange pro program with the NetSuite team um, just to learn a little bit more about what I really could offer clients like that that didn't have that technology available to them. And I kind of fell in love with the fell in love with the job and um, found myself able to completely pivot my career uh, away from public accounting and into consulting. Um, without any of the heartache or the stress or the fear that it takes to leave a job and go find another one. You never know, especially when you're only four years into your career, if you're making the right decision, if that's a decision you want to make, if, you know, if the grass isn't greener on the other side, um, I got to skip all that heartache and just test it out and still have all my same mentors from both sides, both audit and over on the tech side. Um, and it was just such a smooth and like easy and supportive environment to make a pretty massive career shift. Um, so that that's my happiest part. Now I'm still with the tech consulting team and I still have all my buddies over on the audit side to call up anytime I need them. So I'm lucky in that way. For me, I would say it was um, being asked to step up and help in the transaction space. So our group has a lot of those opportunities and 
we really wanted to say, let's get a few people working more extensively in this space. So that way, you know, you can really round out that skill set. And I found it to be super exciting. And I was just really pleased to have like shown my interest and done the necessary work to say I'm a good candidate to help with these projects. And they're usually smaller side deals, right? Like these are mom and pop shops who are looking to transact and they essentially just need some handholding. But I really enjoy making those relationships and helping them through a really confusing time if they aren't somebody who's buying and selling businesses on the regular. I mean, it's all new to them. So that would be really where I would say finding that and being able to excel or to like succeed to excel in um, in that space has been awesome. Um, so I've, I've had quite a number of them over my career, but I'm just going to bring up the most recent one, which is I was asked to, last November, I was asked to help lead our diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives um, employee resource group. So I got uh, put as uh, one of the leads for our My Eyed Pride or the LGBTQ D, uh, ERG employee resource group. Um, so being able to connect with people as part of that community, as well as allies, um, it's it's not... Uh, work-based. It's not accounting-based, I should say, but it is people-based. So having that kind of experience with um, everybody part of that group and helping to grow that space um, is kind of our DEI initiatives are, are growing um, in that space. We also have a um, diversified um, for people of color uh, employee resource group. And then we have two more resource groups that, we're, that are um, coming up online, like a women's resource group and a veterans resource group. So being, being asked to lead that um, employee resource group has been pretty much one of the highlights of my career so far. So, Awesome. Well, thank you, panelists, so, so much. Um, there are endless questions that I, we could spend a whole day answering them all. So I apologize if we did not get to your question, um, but we encourage you to check out our social media pages, our website, um, reach out to any of our professionals on the call today, connect with them on LinkedIn, and I'm sure they'd be happy to answer further questions. Amy, if you could share, awesome, um, awesome. So to wrap up our call today, a few things that I, I wanna just go through. So first things first, um, you can find all of our internships and some of our entry level opportunities by going to our website, idbailey.com slash careers slash campus hires. You can scan this QR code. Um, I'll leave it up for just a second here, um, but we will also in our follow-up email link this website. So that is where you can find all of our opportunities. If you're at a university that uses um, a different platform, you can also find our opportunities at there. So the most common one that we use is Handshake, um, but there's also a variety of other platforms that schools are utilizing and we always post our jobs out to those. So um, that's how you can find our opportunities. We're getting very close to kicking off our um, recruiting season. And so you will be finding our opportunities posted, you know, here within the next few weeks if they're not up yet. Um, lastly, we wanna know how we did today. We hope that you had a valuable experience. And so we'd love to hear your feedback. Um, for anyone who does take the survey, you can scan that QR code right now. And then in our follow-up email, we will also link that survey. So if you missed the QR code, um, but if you take our, if you take our survey, um, and you stayed on for the webinar the whole time, you will receive a fun little gift from us. Um, and so be, you know, a reason to take that survey, but also we really want to hear your feedback. Um, and so we will leave that up for just one second here and then I'll advance to the next one. So make sure you scan that QR code. Um, and lastly, we have our last big giveaway. Um, so we know that you're, you're starting your semesters and we wanna help support that. So we are going to be giving away a $500 gift card to one lucky winner. Um, you know, it's to Amazon, but hopefully you can use it to purchase some textbooks. Um, so our winner is Tiffany Banks. Tiffany, congratulations. Um, $500 is gonna be coming your way. And we're so excited that you stayed on with us this whole time. So, um, with that being said, thank you all so, so much for attending today. We loved getting to share our stories with you all and hope that you learned something and got to learn a little bit more about who we are. Again, my name is Carrie Haugen. I am our campus recruiting manager, and we would love to connect with you, whether it's on LinkedIn or through our I'd Bailey website. Um, if you want to share about your experience today, you can use the hashtag EB360 on all social media platforms. We would love to hear um, what you thought about the webinar, and we will be sending a follow-up email that will contain the recording of this um, webinar 
And so, yes, um, you can see in that email, you'll get the survey link, you'll get the recording to this webinar if you want to share it. Um, and then we encourage you all so much to go check out our opportunities for we've got accounting internships, we've got technology internships, um, and would love to continue connecting with you all. So thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. And um, we're so glad you were here.